Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to give a quick introduction to the Firestore NoSQL database from Firebase. So let's switch back here to the Firebase console and have a look at the Firestore database which already has some data. So how does the Firestore database exactly work? Well, Firestore is a NoSQL database organized around the two core notions of documents and collections. Let's start with documents. We can see here that we have here a group of courses and if we click here in one of them, we're going to see here an example of a document. We're going to cover these unique identifiers and the notion of collections later on. So we can see here that we have an example of a document. So what is a document? A document is the minimal unit of information that we can store in a Firestore database. It looks very much like a JSON object. We can see here that the document has multiple properties containing multiple different types of values. We can have numbers, we can have booleans, we can have strings and we can even have more complex types such as for example arrays. We have here a categories array that contains the multiple categories of the course that happens to have only one element but we could conceivably add here other elements. Let's say that for example this course was applicable to different categories of students. We could add this here to the categories property which is part of the course document. Let's see exactly what type of fields we can add to a Firestore document. So as we can see we can add here string, numbers, we can also add arrays, we can set a field to null. These two fields here geopoint and reference are experimental fields so we don't recommend using this in production yet and we also have here a timestamp field for representing instances in time. So this is slightly different than a JavaScript date as we will learn further on in the course. We also have here besides the array another more complex type which is the map. So this allows us to add to the document a nested object. Let's say for example that we want to add here an offer property and this property would have here a name. Let's say that we would have here Angular University and let's say that we would add here a second field. Let's say for example the field bio and let's put in here a bio say for example high quality Angular courses. Once we click here the field add we are going to see that this object has been added here to our course document. So this is now a nested property of the document. So the document is the minimal amount of data that we can read from the Firestore database. We cannot read from the Firestore database a single field of a document that is not possible. Instead, the minimal amount of information that we can read is a full document. Each document has two important properties besides its data properties. The document is going to have a unique identifier that we can see here and the document is also going to have a document path. We can grab the path for a given document by selecting here the pencil icon here on the Firestore console. We can grab this text path which represents the path to this particular course document in the Firestore database. The path is relative to the root of the database. So each document is only going to be able to exist associated to a collection. So all documents belong to collections and we can only add collections here at the top level of the database. It's not possible to add here documents. So first we add a collection courses and then we are going to be adding documents to it. Each document has a unique identifier. We are going to talk a lot more about collections in the following lesson. Right now in this lesson let's focus on the notion of document. We are going to grab here the document path and we are going to switch to our application and we are going to learn how to query a single document from a Firestore database using Anglerfire. Let's switch back here to our IDE and let's go to the about component that we have used here for populating a database. We can find it here 
under the About folder. As we can see, this is a very simple component and we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit the template. We're going to collapse here this code that we have used to populate some data in our database. We're going to understand it further on in the course. Right now, let's focus on the most fundamental notion of document. We're going to open here the template of our About component and let's go ahead and let's add here a new button. We're going to call it read document. Let's make this an angular material raised button. Let's give it here a color. Let's say that this has the accent color and let's give this a click handler. So whenever this button gets clicked, we are going to call the on read doc method. Using WebStorm, we're going to use Alt Enter in order to create the method directly here in our component. So how do we interact with the Firestore database from an Angular application? Well, we're going to be using Angular Fire and more specifically, we're going to be injecting here in our constructor the Angular Firestore service. So this service was added to our Angular application by this Angular Firestore module that we have imported here right below the initialize app call. Without importing this specific module, we won't be able to access this service. Let's see what we have available in the API of this service. We're going to access here DB and we're going to see that we have here several methods available, including here the doc method. So this is what we need to use in order to read a single document from the database. We can only do so if we have available the document path. Now let's see what the doc method returns. As we can see, we have here multiple options available. We're going to cover in detail value changes and snapshot changes. Right now, we just want to learn the simplest way of reading a document from the database, and that is the get method. So this is going to get us back an observable that we can subscribe to in order to get the data here in our front end. What we're going to be receiving here as the value emitted by this observable is going to be a document snapshot. Let's see what we can do with it. If we access here the snapshot API, we can see that we have here a couple of important methods. We have an ID property, which corresponds to a string, and we have a data method that we can use to grab the document data. So let's print this out here to the console. We're going to print out first the snapshot ID. And now let's go ahead and let's try to retrieve also the document data. We're going to do so by calling here snap.data. Data is a method and not a property, so make sure that you call the function correctly. Let's now try this out to see if our first query is working. We're going to switch here to a larger window and we're going to click here on read document. So as we can see, we got printed out to the console the identifier of our course and also its data. If we open it, we are going to see that we get everything that belongs to the document. We have all the properties, the simple properties such as strings and numbers, but also the more complex properties such as, for example, an array that we get here in its entirety. So if this array would have a thousand or 10,000 elements, we would get this here. So it's not recommended to store a lot of data in an array inside a document. And we also got here the offers object. So anything that was nested here inside this object, we will also get. This is why the document is the minimal unit of information in the Firestore database. The Firestore database is organized to store large quantities of small documents. Usually a document does not contain a lot of data. Going back to our Firebase console, let's discuss another important property of documents, which is that even though all the documents in this list here contain a similar set of fields, this is not mandatory. For example, this document here contains a URL field, a description, etc. But that does not prevent any other document in the collection to contain a completely different set of fields. I could go ahead and delete this field here from this document. I have already added here a new field that the other documents do not contain. So as we can see, the Firestore database is schemaless. There is no schema for documents. They can have any shape that you need. 
This is great for scalability because you will never run into a situation where you have to stop your system, bring everything down and run an altered table statement for hours in order to add a new column to a table with millions of records. That is not a problem in a NoSQL database because it's schemaless, any document can have any set of fields that we need. This is of course a trade-off in favor of scalability because any document having any number of fields can also cause problems in certain situations if some of those fields are considered mandatory, for example, or if they can only have a certain type of value. Now, we are going to learn later on in the course how to enforce the data integrity of your documents using security rules. Right now, let's continue to focus on the fundamental notions that we need in order to understand the Firestore database. So besides documents, we are now going to talk about another fundamental concept, which is the notion of collections. 